NBC's Ryan Nobles is reporting on Capitol Hill. Aaron Gilchrist is covering the White House. Also with us, Jake Sherman, co-founder of Punchbowl News and an MSNBC contributor, and Michael Steele, former RNC chairman, MSNBC political analyst, and co-host of MSNBC's The Weekend. Great to have you guys. Okay, Aaron, what is the president's plan to win back support and confidence, and how is it taking shape? Well, Chris, I keep thinking back to the volunteer in Philadelphia yesterday who told President Biden that she wanted to see Dark Brandon again, and President Biden responded, Dark Brandon is coming back. I think that that is the person we heard on that phone call with MSNBC this morning, the fighter Joe Biden, the feisty, uh, almost testy Joe Biden that you've indicated uh, in talking about the, the reality around he, what he believes, that he has, still has the support of voters. He obviously uh, feels like he needs to be back out in front of voters, shoring up that support, but he feels as though the, the push for him to get out of the race is something that's been coming from inside the beltway, if you will, from the politicos and, and Washington elites uh, that he talked about. And, and you're right, he expressed some frustration about the conversation that continues to happen around his debate performance uh, and other things while he is still out pressing the flesh quite literally with voters. I was with him in Harrisburg uh, yesterday where he spent a few minutes talking and then worked the crowd for about 45 minutes or so uh, in, the, in the hot sun. And I want you to hear a little bit more of his uh, interview from this morning and what he had to say about Democrats in particular, lawmakers, uh, donors, other supporters of the party getting behind him in his bid for re-election. Remember all this talk about how I don't have the black support? Come on, give me a break. Come with me, watch, watch. I'm getting so frustrated by, by the elites. Now, I'm not talking about you guys, but about the elites in the party who they know so much more. But any of these guys yeah. don't think I should let them run against me. Go ahead, announce the announce president. Challenge me in the convention. You know, on Europe, the polls are wrong in France. They're also right, you know, they're, they're, there's no right wave or tide here in America either. By the way, in case you're wondering whether there is one, have you ever seen Trump run away so fast from what he's for? President Biden also said that he believes that he is the person who can and will beat Donald Trump in November. He said that he won the support of Democratic voters during the primaries around the country and that it would be wrong for him to go against the will of those voters who uh, voted for him by a, a, a margin of 87 percent over some of the other people who were on ballots around the country. And so, Chris, I think we can expect to see President Biden uh, obviously have world leaders here in Washington this week and then back on the campaign trail on Friday, headed to Michigan before he goes to Texas and Nevada in the days to come, Chris. All right, Ryan, so today's the day Congress comes back. I don't know how many of them have been in the halls of Congress yet, but who and what are you watching for? It's been pretty quiet up to this point, Chris, but I do think the, the big target that we have this morning is trying to figure out where Senate Democrats are. We know that there's an unbelievable amount of anxiety among House Democrats, and they've voiced that to us uh, either through private conversations or many of them, nine members publicly stating that they want to see the president step down. There's yet to be one Senate Democrat who has said that they believe that there should be a new nominee uh, at the top of the Democratic Party, and there's been a few senators that have actually come out and reaffirmed their support for President Biden, including John Fetterman in Pennsylvania, Bob Casey, who's up for re-election in Pennsylvania. Uh, just uh, a few minutes ago, Senator uh, Cortez Masto of Nevada uh, expressing her support for President Biden. And so uh, that doesn't mean, though, that there isn't the same level of concern among Senate, Senate Democrats. They're just being a lot more quiet about those conversations than their House counterparts. Uh, there's going to be a much different conversation taking place here on Capitol Hill than what we've seen play out since that debate took place. Uh, a couple of Thursdays ago. They're now going to be face to face. They're going to be in private rooms. The House Democrats are going to meet tomorrow morning uh, in a location where they've been told they cannot bring their phones so that they can have an honest conversation about what takes place. When they emerge from these meetings, when they have these family conversations, that's when we may get a better sense of where the future of the party is headed. The one thing is for sure, Chris, they are not interested in a public spat with President Biden. They would prefer to not get to the point where they have to stand up and call on him publicly to step down, at least the vast majority of them and the leaders of both the House and the Senate. If they get to a point where they believe he needs to step down, they want to have a private conversation with him and hope that he makes that decision on his own. We're a long way away from that yet, Chris. And as you pointed out at the top of your broadcast, the next 48 hours will go a long way to telling us where the party is headed.
So, Jake, you point out in Punchbowl that the, the Democratic Party is split, House versus Senate, swing districts versus safe seats, veteran lawmakers versus their younger colleagues. Where do you see this heading, and what are you watching for over these next 48 hours? Well, first of all, I just want to say one thing about what, what Biden said on Morning Joe, which was a great interview, is that he, he, he was ragging on the elites. It's difficult to make that argument. He's been in, in the Senate or the White House or the vice presidency since 1972 for all but four years. Now, listen, I don't know. It's not our, my job specifically to say whether he should not be on the ticket, but I can tell you that I have found very few, very, very few House Democrats who either don't want him gone or want or don't or question whether he's up for the task. I, I think it's um, if you in, if you had a private ballot or a private counting, it would probably be more than half do not think he could win the presidency. Whether they want him to step down or believe he should step down is a different matter. Um, I, what am I looking for? Number one, every single Democratic frontliner, many of whom are running in districts that um, uh, Biden will struggle in are going to have to make the calculation whether they'd be better off with a different ticket, whether Kamala Harris is at the top of that ticket. I'd say that's probably most likely. Um, I, I agree with Ryan that the leadership is going to be key here. Hakeem Jeffries and Chuck Schumer are going to have to make a decision probably together about how they want to present the public face of uh, uh, Hill Democrats vis-a-vis -vis Biden. And, and I agree with Ryan that, that they don't want a public spat, but they have a public spat right now. <laughs> they have a dozen Democrats who have said that they don't believe that the party's nominee should be the party the party's nominee. That is obviously something they would like to avoid. Biden put them in this position, and now they have to live with it. And again, just I'll close by saying this one thing. Um, Every single House and Senate Democrat are thinking about one thing first and, firm, and foremost, more than the presidency, is whether they will be reelected to serve another term in the House and Senate. And their calculation on whether Biden should remain on the ticket is going to be uh, uh, at least informed by the idea about whether they could win another term with Joe Biden on the ticket. So uh, elites versus, I guess, every day, you know, the, the Joe Biden Scranton voter, uh, Michael Steele, um, our own Aaron Gilchrist uh, spoke with a number of voters at a, a kind of a Harris, uh, a Biden Harris uh, picnic in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania yesterday. I want to play just sort of a representative sampling of what they had to say. There is no other alternative. So I'm going to be supporting Joe Biden all the way. I just don't think that we can deal with his his health, and it's no fault of his own. I think we need to have opportunities to hear him, like today, um, common folks like myself, and uh, make the decisions, you know, based on what facts and not what the noise everyone says. I'm committed to voting for Joe Biden. So granted, they're at a Biden-Harris picnic, Michael, but I, I, I think, look, um, is, maybe, maybe this is the question. Is Joe Biden right when he says he's listening to the voters, not to the elites? Yeah, because guess what? They vote. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm listening to the voters. And Joe Biden can talk about the elites having been among them and being part of them himself. He knows of what he speaks. So when he says what he says about the elites, he knows where they're coming from because we've seen this narrative play out again. Look, this is just a pathetic conversation. We've taken one event and we've turned it now into a week and a half to two weeks of noise. So you've made the bad thing worse, Democrats, by the way you've responded to it publicly lashing out against the president um, and, and, and shifting the, the argument away from the real threat who's standing opposite Joe Biden. And so now the Democrats have to figure out after this morning's conversation or morning Joe what they're going to do. And what they're going to do is what those voters at that picnic said. They're going to have to stand behind the guy because you, have a, you literally have two weeks to get this done. And Joe's right. OK, you want to challenge me? Put someone in the race. Show me a poll of, of a Democrat who's beating Donald Trump right now or is competitive with Donald Trump. That person, get in the race. Run, run against me because I'm not going anywhere. So what are you going to do with that? So all the hand-wringing and, and the mind-numbing conversation around Joe Biden getting out of the race really has to stop if you want to be in the game the rest of the way.
Hey there, MSNBC fans. I'm Luke Russert, and be sure to join me, Rachel Maddow, Jen Psaki, Lawrence O'Donnell, Steve Kornacki, Joy Reid, and many more, September 7th in Brooklyn, MSNBC Live Democracy 2024. Click on the link for ticket information. We will see you there.